Hello gorgeous people, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we are going to be whipping the Motorola Moto G82 out of the box and taking a full on tour. And if you're thinking to yourself, Jiminy Crickets, there sure are a lot of those Moto G something or other smartphones kicking about these days, well you'd be very correct indeed. If the Moto G family was actually a British working class family, they'd inevitably be plastered all over the front of the Daily Mail and labelled as benefit raiding scrounger scum with too many bloody kids. Priced at £289, the Moto G82 is practically going head to head with Motorola's own Moto Edge 30, which was reduced to just 329 quid the last time I checked. And like the Edge, you get some proper lush mid-range specs like a 120Hz AMOLED screen, a 50 meg snapper with OIS, a mighty 5000mAh battery. But is the camera tech any good? Can the Moto G82 handle its games? All these questions and more will be answered in this unboxing, so enough of me banging on. Please do plug subscribe, ding that notification bell for more on the latest and greatest tech, and let's crack on. So first up, what do you get in the slightly greasy box? Sorry, I was handling it last night when I was having some deep-fried goodness. Well, you got yourself one Moto G82 smartphone pre-clad in that bundled condom case. You've got yourself a 33 watt power adapter, even says 33 around the back in case you forget. Bit of USB Type-C cable action, way. And some highly exciting readme type literature stuff and a porky pin device to get your SIM in there. And that is it, so let's crack on with the Bally phone. So here we have the Moto G82, and it is a 6.6 incher, but thankfully doesn't feel it in the hand because it has quite a long and thin aspect ratio and pretty skinny bezels surrounding that display, as you can see there. And it really is very light as well at just 173 grams, which is certainly helped by the fact that it's got a plastic arse end and a plastic frame. So the G82 may not feel particularly premium around back, but it certainly looks smart enough. You've got this kind of mottled design work going on, even though the back end of the phone is completely smooth and it does have a shiny, glossy style finish, as you can see there, reflecting the light nicely, but not doing a terrible job of masking those fingerprints and greasy marks as well, helped along by the fact that it's quite a dark finish, of course. This is the meteorite grey model. Almost got that sort of typical mortar or the blue haze though when the light strikes it just so. You can also grab the G82 in white lily. So already smashing out those bright and bold colours for this particular smartphone. You got the dinky little motor or the logo slapped there in the centre of the back end as usual and I quite like the camera chassis, it looks similar to the Moto Edge series so clearly Motorola is going this way with the sort of rounded corners. And it's not quite flush with the surface but almost, it only barely juts out. No pre-installed screen protector, unfortunately, and Motorola didn't specifically mention if that front end was Gorilla Glass, we'll have to see how it fares over the long term. However, like most Motorola smartphones, it is IP52 splash resistant, so it can get a bit moist when required. Now, as you'd hoped for, halfway through 2022, the Moto G82 does rock the latest version of Android, Android 12, and should hopefully get an update to Android 13 and maybe Android 14 beyond that? Motorola doesn't tend to offer the longest software support, unfortunately, on its blows, probably because it's got so bloody many of them, it would be impossible to keep on updating every single one of them. So the Moto G82, like most of its more affordable siblings, probably not one for the long haul. But I do enjoy how Motorola always slaps a lovely stock version of Android on its smartphones. So you've got your Discover feed, you've got the usual Google app shenanigans, drag down your notifications bar. All those great Android 12 features are just present and correct, like the quick toggles for the camera and mic access, for instance. And the customization is pretty decent as well. Head to, to personalize, you can play around with the icons, the colors. You can make sure the theme fits the wallpaper for a bit of consistency. And as usual, Motorola's only real contribution is the Moto app, which offers up some genuinely useful bonus bits. So you got the likes of the gesture support, including, yes, the double karate chop. Wow! Oh, it smacked my finger there, bugger, bugger, bugger. If we head back, you've also got some tips and tricks for getting the most out of your Motorola device, a couple of display features, and then my favourite, the Games Mode, or Game Time as it is actually known, so there's some proper good tools and features when you are gaming, which I'll be touching on later. So some cracking stuff there, and in further good news, Motorola doesn't chuck a lot of crapware on its smartphones either, so you won't find LinkedIn or TikToks or any of that shenanigans. Oh, I say that, but you do get bloody Facebook still, so let's just get that right in the bin. Don't fancy reading Uncle Dave's racist propaganda today, thank you very much. And on the security side, the Moto G82 rocks an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor built into that power button, so just tap your digit against that, and as you see, you're straight into your smartphone. Works really bloody well despite the fact that it is super narrow, so kudos to Motorola for that one. And you also have some face unlock action on there in case your fingers are like really gritty or moist or something and all you need to do is just as you see there, tap the power button and it's not particularly nippy but it gets there in the end. 
And Motorola has chucked in 128 gigs of storage space. Thankfully, not much of that taken up by the system files, the apps, because it is that clean stock version of Android. It's only good old Genshin Impact that's making a serious impact. Hence its bloody name. And if we slide out the SIM tray, you'll see you've got space for two SIM cards. And that second SIM slot can alternatively be used to house a micro SD memory card up to one terabyte in size. Now let's have a good long stare at that lovely display tech for it's a 6.6 inch AMOLED panel with full HD plus resolution. So certainly competitive at this sort of price point. Because it is an OLED display, you've got the lovely luscious deep blacks, the sharp contrast, all that good stuff. No HDR support, unfortunately, here on the Motorola Moto G82. Certainly Netflix wasn't supporting HDR when I checked. But the visuals are still pretty ruddy great. And of course, you've got those nice poppy colors as well. 10-bit color support here on the Moto G82. Got nice wide viewing angles. Uh, screen certainly seems bright enough on that top level, bright enough to use outdoors, even on the extremely sunny days we're having right now in the UK, which, yeah, still like what? There are quite a few display settings you can play around with, including the color modes. You can uh, put it down to natural. If you don't want those colors to be boosted quite so much, you can play around with the color temperature, etc. And of course, that refresh rate as well, set to auto by default. It uh, tends to spend most of its time at 60 hertz, but it can boost itself occasionally to 120 hertz when you're messing around with supported content and the general UI navigation seems pretty smooth helped along again by the fact that it is that stock Android finish and if you decide to kick back with a bit of Disney Plus Netflix whatever else and you go full screen there's only a tiny little selfie orifice housed there up at the top end it is centrally positioned rather than wedged away in a corner but not too intrusive and the Motorola Moto G82 also boasts a stereo speaker output but is it actually up to snuff? Mostly thanks to the hyperactive batch bonkers back end, which flashes more than a dodgy vicar in a carry on film. So I bumped up the volume to maximum levels, not bad output at all. Of course, as usual, that bottom speaker has got a bit more grunt compared with the top speaker, but it's not massively imbalanced. And of course, the clarity isn't fantastic once you do bump up the volume. But again, for smartphone speakers, not too shabby. And then, hallelujah, you do actually get a headphone jack down here on the bottom end of the Moto G82, so you can get plugged in if you want. Otherwise, there's full Bluetooth 5.1 streaming support. And if we jump back into that Moto app, scroll all the way down to the bottom, you see you've got some Dolby Atmos tuning on here too. This is set to smart mode by default, but you can switch it to one of the individual presets and you can also tweak those presets. If you like a bit of bass, a bit of treble, you want to boost those vocals, pretty nifty stuff. Now for the performance side of things, well, the Motorola Moto G82 is powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 695 chipset. Slightly disappointing that it is a 600 series at this £300 price point. But I've got to say that performance has been absolutely fine for everyday shenanigans, so apps don't take forever to load up. They do tend to close down fairly quickly in the background uh, once you've got a few things on the go. So multitasking certainly isn't this phone's strong suit. Something that's further confirmed by the benchmarking scores, not the uh, most competitive multi-core score there compared with some rivals. And I've seen a little bit of shonkiness here and there as well in my time with the Moto G82. For instance, the video streaming can be quite juddery at times, usually when you first load up a show. Usually sorts itself out after just a few seconds or so, but all the same, it is quite jarring and not what you'd expect from a near £300 smartphone. So overall, pretty good, but some room for improvement. Although gamers will be happy enough with the performance that you'll get out of the Moto G82. It's no surprise that light affair like Call of Duty Mobile and PUBG play really nicely, even when you bump up the detail settings. There's a nice smooth frame rate action to go with those nice crisp graphics. And of course, it didn't make me actually any good at these games. I still got my face perforated over and over and over again, but hey ho. And ever the optimist, I also thought I would try a bit of Genshin Impact action. Wasn't expecting much out of it, but you know what? As long as you keep it on the lowest graphic settings, the performance is actually all right. Will you see occasional judders and stumbles and just complete freezes? Yes, you will, unfortunately. But overall, it does remain playable with a reasonably smooth frame rate throughout. And while the back end of the Moto G82 started to get a little bit warm after, you know, half an hour, 40 minutes of non-stop gaming, it wasn't too bad at all. The 600 series chipsets are pretty energy efficient, so I wasn't expecting any throttling here. And at any point while you are gaming, you can conjure up that game time menu with a quick tap of this icon at the side here. And this has expanded quite a lot in recent times to offer quite a good selection of different gaming features. You can block calls, you can block notifications, so you are not distracted at all. It's been a little bit shonky today, um, seeing that it's already on, even though the icon isn't actually illuminated, but that's probably just an early uh, pre-release glitch. 
I've got it on good old high performance mode, of course, for Genshin Impact, and you can record the screen, do all kinds of stuff. And the Snapdragon 695 has a built-in 5G modem, so you've got full 5G support here on the Moto G82 as well. Connectivity seems fine, the Wi-Fi seems nice and nippy, handy when downloading absolute almighty monsters like Genshin Bloody Impact. And as I mentioned before, the 600 series is quite energy efficient, and that combined with the fact that Motorola has stuffed a 5,000 milliamp hour capacity battery inside of the G82 means good, strong longevity. You'll be able to enjoy hours of screen on time from a single charge. If you're a bit more careful, a bit more restrained, you'll be able to get a couple of days of life out of a single charge too. And you've got 30 watt wired charging support here on the Moto G82. So it's not the nippiest around at this sort of price point by any means. Like so Xiaomi do offer, you know, 50, 60, 65 watt fast charging on some of its handsets at this price point. But still nippy enough when you need it. And naturally no wireless charging support though, which is a very rare feature to find at this sort of price. So for the camera tech, Motorola has gone with a triple lens setup on the G82, spearheaded, as you can see there, by a 50 megapixel primary sensor with optical image stabilization built in. You've got the usual feature-packed Motorola UI on board here, including good old AI smarts, which tell you when you need to change up that camera mode to get better results. So let's switch to portrait, get a nice shot of Veronica here. There are lots of different tools and features to play around with, and it's generally quite one-hand friendly. Now, 50 meg primary sensor does a pretty decent job of everyday photos without balking the colors or, you know, tweaking things too much. Fairly natural looking images and even in quite strong contrast, it generally holds up pretty well. You get some little bits of saturation creeping in here and there, but nothing too dramatic. Of course, in more ambient light and lower light conditions, it does tend to struggle a little bit more. You get softer results, bit of noise and grain creeping in, but the optical image stabilization helps to keep things as sharp as possible. You'd also have an ultra wide angle shooter that you can swap to at any point. It's a basic eight megapixel effort. And again, this does fine during the day, but struggles a little bit more in the evenings where you'll get murkier results. And last up for that triple lens setup is a macro sensor. It's a two meg effort. Nice and easy to swap to just right there on the main screen is the toggle. And I still don't really personally really see the point in macro lenses, but some people do like them. So there you have it. You've got a variety of other modes you can play around with, including, of course, the portrait mode. If you swap to pro mode, well, this gives you full manual controls over the white balance, the ISO level, shutter speed, everything. This even comes with the option of shooting in raw format if you want to do some editing on the fly. And plenty of other bits as well, including Motorola's spot color feature. You've got a proper bit of night vision action, which does make a difference when the lighting conditions are low. And of course, a 50 megapixel ultra resolution mode as well, if you want to pack as much detail in there as possible. And last up, if we swap to the video mode, the disappointment here is that there's no support for 4K Ultra HD resolution footage. You've got Full HD plus video by default, and that can be shot at 30 or 60 frames per second. But that's it. And last up around front in that little selfie orifice tucked way up at the top end of the screen there, you've got a 16 megapixel selfie shooter. This ain't bad at all for your everyday shareable, Instagrammable shots, whatever, if that's what you're into. Doesn't capture a huge amount of detail unless the lighting conditions are perfect, which in my case is actually pretty good. You can struggle a little bit in low light situations as well, but you do have a screen flash feature which is brighter than the sun, so uh, that will help out when it's night time and also give you a tan at the same time. And for shooting a video with that selfie snapper, well, no surprises that it is again topped off at full HD resolution. There's no option of 30 or 60 frames per second. This time, audio pickup seems absolutely fine again. Not great in the sort of lower light situations, but it does the job. And there you have it, my pretties. That is the Motorola Moto G82 in a big old tasty nutshell. The camera tech, the game, and the battery life, all the shenanigans that you need to know. So what do you reckon? Are you tempted by the G82? Certainly it's got a lot of lovable bits in there, a few little rough edges as well to contend with. Anyhow, it'd be great to hear your own thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech, and have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.